So, so you know, I, it's, it's funny you say that because I, I was in the military for many years. And one of the things we always said was work smarter, not harder. And, and that's really what your whole entire analogy with the superheroes and everything is. You don't need to be a superhero. What you need to do is be smart enough to, to automate your job and to, to progress through to make things repeatable and better. And, and that's really what DevOps has become. I mean, we finally bridge a gap between development dropping operations with complete trash and saying, deal with it, it's your problem now. And then not taking responsibility for when the bugs and errors and you know people getting up at 2 a.m. to recycle services, you know, when all of that happens. So this this gap in the middle, I don't know why it took so many years to get here. Yeah, I, I have never understood. Like when I uh, first got into my career, I had a job offer to be a developer and I had a job offer to be a sysadmin. And I had no idea that anybody was going to tell me, oh, you're not a developer. They're, like, I didn't know there was this holy war. So I was like very disappointed to find out like, Oh wait! <laughs> As a sysadmin, you're not considered a developer. You're considered an operator. Like I, I hate that operator word. Um, to me, like DevOps is very much a culture sh change and how we talk about and communicate with each other. And that's going back to my talk. It's all about empathy and understanding. At the end, like what are we trying to achieve? Too often we're like focus on like here's this feature I need to get it done out the door and throw it over to QA who then throws it over to uh, development and uh, I prefer to think about it like okay our, we're trying to provide this kind of service we want to get here and that's why I'm very anti your, your DevOps name because it's not just DevOps it's no it's not your QE it's your product managers your project managers all these other people they have important parts of the job I mean, we could start calling it security, PM, QE, DevOps land or something. And I, and I think companies I think companies in small organizations got it. I mean, you go and work in a small company, you wear so many different hats that developers do have direct access to production. They don't exactly. always have the automated tools exactly. and everything. And I, I think the reason why larger companies are starting to catch on with this is, is basically that they saw the success of these small companies making a lot of money with allowing people to wear different hats and go forward and, and do things that were just non-traditional. And, and it worked. So now in the big corporate environment, you have to put line items on everything and every job description and DevOps was something very easy for them to sell. Ah. And, you know, so we need these DevOps engineers. There's studies about DevOps. There's studies about this. So now big corporations can buy into it. But big corporations do what big corporations do, which is every single person has a line item and a number. Especially when you get into, um, like, uh, compliance issues. You know, you have SOX compliance, you have PCI and PII compliance issues, where you can't have people who have source code access actually have access to the production environment to deploy things. So with all this Sarbanes-Oxley compliance and, and credit card compliance and all that, big corporations really worry about that. Um, I, I can kind of speak for Warner Brothers in this case. We have a, a large you know, credit card PCI compliance issue that you know, gets reviewed every year by an auditor, and they, we want to be beyond reproach on that. And so making sure that the correct policies are in place. So where does DevOps fit in that? You know, so this is where they have to put a name on it and put structure and rules around it which is exactly the opposite of how it came to be. Ah, so you have enlightened me. I, we had uh, policies that we had to follow at Yahoo, but uh, it, was, it was sort of a different universe. And I feel like I'm understanding a little bit more. I feel like we're trying to put people into buckets when we should actually look at tools and policies around yeah. things like Chef, where you can say, here's the configuration, the deployment, nobody touches production. Right. And so then you can have that sort of policy-driven uh, configuration management and deployment. Uh, and then separately, if we think about people as engineers and all the skills that they have, and we don't say, okay, you do this and you do this, because then we limit the growth of the individual as well as our company and single points of failure in people versus technology. And now I'm seeing like, oh, like how do we bridge this understanding of this idea around culture and DevOps to over to enterprise and give them that transition, that bridge of like, hey, don't force the people into DevOps engineers. Right. Get your tools. 